Hey guys, what he just heard was the Behringer Digital Multi Effects. As you know, this channel is all about music and gear. I don't care if it costs 10 bucks or 10,000, as long as it sounds good, as long as it gives you a certain emotion, that's all I care about. So having said that, let's go. You know I'd do anything for you guys, right? Well, today I bought the cheapest multi-effects pedal I could find on Amazon, so you don't have to. So before we get started, I think the real question we need to answer together is, did I just throw 20 bucks out the window? We all know at this price range, these pedals can be a bit hit and miss. And more importantly, do all inexpensive pedals suck? Well, let's find out by looking at the Behringer Digital Multi Effects pedal. Always worth mentioning those 20 bucks were straight out of my pocket, and this is definitely not a sponsored video. So in three easy steps, what we're going to do is one, look at the build quality, the connections and the actual pedal itself. Two, plug it in and run through all the available effects and see how it sounds. In a third and final step, we're going to draw conclusions, see what we think and try to answer some of those questions. Before we start looking at the pedal itself, just by way of background, I was wasting time on Amazon as usual and decided it'd be a good idea for us to review the cheapest multi-effects pedal that I could find. Behringer is a well-renowned brand. It's been in the market for quite some time. So let's have a look at this one. First thing that you'll notice is it's made out of plastic. It is, the whole thing is plastic. It basically has some sort of metal base to it, but the whole thing is plastic in this sexy space gray. So this pedal has six incorporated effects. With the help of this dial, you have a pitch shifter, you have a tremolo, a delay, phaser, chorus, and flanger. And they are each selected by this dial. After that, you have two parameter dials, which depending on which of these single effects you're using, they do different things. But generally, the first parameter one is usually the rate. So for example, in a delay is the rate of delay and parameter two is the depth of the delay. So generally they do the same thing. I know that, for example, the pitch shifter doesn't actually use parameter one, but only uses two, if I'm not mistaken, or maybe the other way around. But the only other dial is the level. So you can blend in how much of the effects you want in your sound. In terms of connections, we have a very nice surprise. This is the stereo pedal. So we have two inputs right and left and two outputs. If you only want to use a mono, just use one of them. It's a very simple pedal. It takes both 9 volt batteries and a wall power supply. So really, that's about it. Let's move on to the sounds. Okay, guys, so I'm running straight into my Blackstar HT5, then into my Torpedo Cab, and I have the Behringer multi-effects in the effects loop of the Blackstar. So this is my clean sound. Okay, so let's start with some flanger on the clean sound, see how that goes. Okay, let's go on, let's move on to the chorus. Let's then move on to the phaser. Okay, cool. Let's go to the delay. Okay, let's move on to the tremolo. Let's get some cowboy sounds going. Sounded good. 
And finally, the pitch shifter. What about this? Whoa. Okay, standard two octaves down. So let's do something a bit more creative. Whoa. And we're back. So we've listened to this. We've listened to all six effects. Let's draw our conclusions. As to be expected, there's some good and bad news. Start with the good news, shall we? I actually don't think it sounds too bad considering the price point. 20 pounds? Not too bad for six effects. Now, granted that those effects need to be dialed in. I found that specifically with the delay, you need to play around with the depth quite a lot. It's actually a decent delay. Same thing with the chorus, phaser, etc. The pitch shifter, as usual, is one of those effects that, for personally, I find not that useful, but it's always fun to mess around with. Um, I haven't recorded anything using a pitch shifter yet, but you never know. So. Overall, I think the sound quality is, I don't want to say, almost on par with some slightly more expensive pedals. So I was not shocked by the sound quality. Let's put it that way. I had fun playing it, especially with the clean guitar. I thought that it sounded really good. You have some nice options in terms of sculpting your sound. I'm actually quite impressed with the sound quality. So I don't think you could do any better than that for the price. The second fantastic thing I think we need to mention is the stereo output. Really good to have stereo output because if you want to do delay and some of the other modulation effects, stereo output, if you're running it in stereo, makes a massive difference. So that is definitely a plus. Other very good feature is the power supply. So both 9 volt battery and the wall plug. Very, very good. A lot of pedal makers, and especially the cheap ones, kind of forego the battery option. And sometimes, depending on where you are and if you use it live or not, that could be slightly problematic. Okay, so let's move on to the less good things. We can't get around the fact that it is plastic. It feels slightly like a toy. It does not feel very robust. When I changed it with my foot, I thought I was going to break it. So I've actually been turning it on and off with my hand, not to damage it before the review. I appreciate, obviously, as a manufacturer, that's where you cut the costs, but it's really on the cheap plastic side. Let's put it in perspective. If you're in the studio, or if you're recording at home, or if you're just a bedroom player, it might not be important to you that it's made in plastic because you're not going to be aggressive with it. You're not going to stomp on it and it, it may not be an issue. So as in life, everything depends on your perspective, right? I would definitely, definitely not take this on any stage because I think this would last 25 minutes. And I would also be very careful in a band rehearsal scenario because it doesn't really fill me with confidence. Second ne negative point, and there's more of a design issue. I really do not like the dial to select each effect. Again, I appreciate that they're short in space, but it just doesn't quite do it for me. I never know which effects I'm turning on. I don't feel confident that I'm in the right place because there's no notches on it. It's just free floating. So you just need to be careful that it clicks in properly. So I think that's a really easy fix. And again, in a scenario where I need to switch effects quickly, I would not feel confident that I'm in the right place with this dot. And again, it might be important to some or it might not. The battery, if you want to change the battery or put the battery in, you need to unscrew the bottom and then pull the whole thing out. It's quite clear based on these features that I just don't see how anyone who play in a band rehearsal or some sort of live performance would feel confident in that because if your battery dies, it takes you 25 minutes to change it. So again, that's something to bear in mind. I'm not a pedal manufacturer. I don't know if it's again, a cost saving issue or if they could simply put a little door here to change the battery. So let's sort of thinking at all. What do you think? Did we answer some of those questions from the beginning of the video? Yes, this pedal is quite problematic, but there is a massive but. I spent 20 pounds on it and it actually sounds good. Guys, let's remember that I do strongly believe that we are very fortunate to live in a time where we find gear like this that is 
inexpensive and sounds good. Everything in life has a cost. So it's obvious that it's going to have some major issues somewhere, but it just depends whether you're willing to accept those and whether you want something to keep in your bedroom, just just add a few effects to your practice sound. If you want to record with it, I actually think it's fine. It does a decent job. You can only select one effect at a time. So it may not be suitable in any case, regardless of the other issues or live shows. So ultimately, to answer the question, I actually give it a thumbs up. I think for £20, I didn't throw them out the window. I think it's worth it. And if you're starting off or you want something nice and simple, don't want to spend a lot of money. It does the job and it does it very well. As usual, I'm going to link this in the description. And make sure you subscribe to the channel, tap that notification bell, because I don't want to tell you again. Peace.